So this is whipped Peter, or Gordon, which abolitionists use as evidence that slavery was horrible. Now, there's something very suspicious about this story. Notice that slavery is so horrible, and abolitionists could tell you details about the horrors of slavery, but this is the only real physical evidence that they have. There should be hundreds or thousands of photos like this, but we only get the one. And I say again, this story is very suspicious. Apparently, this guy was beaten severely twice in a short time. Now, I believe only one of these stories is true, but you decide for yourself. When I look on YouTube and people are talking about this guy, most fail to mention the other beating. The story goes like this. On the Lyons Plantation in Louisiana, the overseer severely whips Gordon to the point it takes two months for him to recover. This happened two months before Christmas, 1862. He mentions that when he regained his senses, he started to go crazy, wanted to shoot people, and burned up his clothes. The master arrives and discharges the overseer. Three months after the Emancipation Proclamation, he escapes. So sometime in the late March 1863, he arrives at the Union camp. It took him like 10 days to reach the Union, uh, I think it's the 19th Corp in Baton Rouge. Gordon joined the Union Army as a guide three months after the Emancipation Proclamation. So that's March right? Sometime in March. So basically, as soon as he got there, allowed for the enrollment of freed slaves into the military forces. On one expedition, he was taken prisoner by the rebels. They tied him up, beat him, and left him for dead. So they beat him severely. He survived and once more escaped to Union lines. Like I said, he got severely beaten twice, apparently. Me, personally, I don't believe the plantation story. As soon as he gets to the Union camp, he tells his story and they take photos. Here's a photo of him shortly after he arrives at the camp. Notice that he's leaning comfortably on his back, but to be fair, the wound should have healed by then if he was attacked during his time on the plantation. Now, if he was barefoot for 10 days, it's funny how his feet look reasonably okay. Now, to me, the photo that they show of his whipped back looks like Union pants, not the pants that he's wearing once he arrives at the camp. They took this photo of him arriving at the camp, right? Why do they make him change into Union pants and then take the photo? That doesn't make any sense to me. I think that's weird. Unless Sometime after his healing from the beating by the rebels, they take this photo. That would make sense to me. You would think that the camp has remedies to make him heal faster, and then they take the photo. He also says that when he regained his strength, he threatened to shoot everybody. Well, if he was on the plantation, where would he have access to a gun? Now, if this happened after his ordeal with the rebels, made it back to the camp, and he's recovering, I'm sure there's guns around there, which makes me believe that this whipping is all from the rebels and not from the plantation. So the abolitionists saw an opportunity to demonize slavery, so they used that scenario to demonize it. They plastered this picture all over the US and internationally. This one photo. If slavery was so bad, there should be several others, but we haven't seen them. Any rational person will tell you that, you know, this is suspicious. Also, we were told that it took two months for him to recover. Now, the rebels most likely opened those wounds, but apparently a month later, he gets back into action during the siege of Port Hudson in May, 1863. You can't decide for yourself, but the story sounds suspect to me, especially when they just focus on the slavery aspect and not what the rebels did. They just casually slip that in there and not make a big deal about it. So this article shows that, or tells us that Peter told his story on April 2nd, 1863, which is weird because there's other reports that tell us that he escaped the plantation. It took him 10 days and eventually he arrived there sometime in March. We don't know exactly when in March, but sometime in March. 
And then he told his story because he says uh, 10 days from today. So sometime in March, he um, told his story. And then what I'm thinking is that sometime in March, he told his story and then he joined the union. He was a, a scout, I believe, uh, or a guide. And he got captured by the rebels. They severely beaten him. They whipped him, he escaped, and they healed him. And then eventually he got better. And then April 2nd is probably when they took the photos of him being severely beaten by the rebels, but they blamed it on the slave owner when it was really the rebels that did it. And then I know like sometime April 16th, that's when the Northerners received it. And then they started distributing it all of a sudden and it got into Harper's Weekly in July. And then they were spreading this all over uh, the United States to prove that slavery was horrible when no, this was done by the rebels. This was done during the war. It's totally different, right? It's not done by the, the slave master or the overseer. So this is the propaganda of the abolitionists. I truly believe that because where are the other um, fantastic photos of the barbarity of slavery? Where are they? We mainly see this one all the time. It's very suspicious. Another point of contention is Harper's Weekly, which is supposed to be a respectable political magazine that started in 1857 and lasted to 1916. They did a lot of coverage on the American Civil War. Now, in that magazine, like this article that you see right now, they actually tell you that Gordon escaped, like whipped Peter, he escaped from a Mississippi plantation. But wait a minute, there's other reports that say he escaped from a Louisiana plantation. So which is it, Louisiana or Mississippi? And then in this article, they tell you that he was beaten on Christmas day. No, apparently there's other reports that say that he was beaten two months before Christmas, 1862. So what's going on here? And it just goes to show you that there's a lot of misinformation back then and uh, propaganda can be passed off as fact, you know, or, or if there's misinformation, it could be passed off as fact. Like I remember um, reading this time capsule article in uh, the New York Times where Stephen A. Douglas complained about the media misrepresenting the things that he said and the things that Lincoln said. So yes, there are problems within the media back in the day but everybody takes it as fact. And that's what gets on my nerves. Even now there's problems. There's people reporting things that are not true and they're going, to, they're going back and forth like, oh, who's right, who's wrong, I don't know. You understand? There's a lot of misinformation. So you have to like try to get both sides and then see what's really going on. And once you find out the information, you start to realize like someone is not telling the truth here. Something is going on. And there's a lot of misinformation when it comes to this particular man.